a fish with weight of 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 newton is supported by a cable attached to an end of a 5 meter rod that can pivot at the base. Another cable is attached from the rod to the wall to hold the system as shown in figure 1. The cables and the rod are massless. Number 1. Draw the free body diagram of the system. Number 2. Calculate the tension in the cable between the rod and the wall. And number 3. Calculate the horizontal and vertical forces exerted on the base of the rod. The first question, draw the free body diagram of the system. For this particular system, we will be drawing the free body diagram of the rod. The first force is going to be the tension due to the weight of the fish. For this one, I will be labeling it as T with the subscript of F. Tension due to the weight of the fish. And we have the supporting cable from the rod to the wall. And then this one is going to be TC. Angle will be 20 degrees. Moving on, at the other end of our rod, there will be two forces, which is due to the normal. And then it will have two components, which is going to be normal along the X component and X, as well as another one, which is going to be NY. These two normal, we can actually combine it together. So this is the correct free body diagram of our system. Question number two, calculate the tension in the cable between the rod and the wall. Meaning that we need to calculate the value of TC. From the original diagram, we know that TF will be equivalent to the weight of the fish, which is 12. 0.5 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton. For any object to be in static equilibrium, it will have to follow these two rules. The first one is total force is going to be equal to 0 for both X and Y component. Or we can write down the first rule as Fx is equal to zero and then another one is the total f along the y component is also going to be equal to zero the second and the last rule for any object to be in static equilibrium is total torque is equal to zero so we're going to apply the first rule for the x component total f x is equal to zero if we look at the diagram there are two forces acting on the X component, which is NX. We're just going to list down the forces. And another one is going to be TC. Because TC is tilted with this angle, meaning that it will have X component to the left and then Y component going upward direction. So we can just write down TCX. Even though we are adding all of the forces together, we have to bear in mind that force have direction. And X is directed to the right, so it will be positive. And then we add with negative TX because 
TCX is directed to the left and then it is going to be equal to 0. We can also write down the full expression for TCX. It is going to be negative TC multiply with cos 20 degrees. We can also write down in this form where we move TC to the right hand side of the formula. So it will be TC cos 20 degrees. We cannot proceed further because we have two unknown here which is NX as well as TC. With that, we proceed to the second equation which is to find the total force along the y component which must equal to zero. In this case, we're going to have three forces which is NY. Again, just listing all of the forces together and then we have TF going downward and another one is going to be TCY. It is equal to zero. And then now we're going to give sign according to its direction for ny will be positive tf going downward negative y direction and then tcy will be positive now we can substitute appropriate equation as well as values for each of the parameters so ny minus with 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 and then we add with tc sine 20 degrees it is equal to zero we can also write this down as ny is equal to 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 minus tc sine 20 degrees again we cannot proceed further because we have two unknown here which is ny as well as tc now we will be using the second rule which is total torque is equal to zero for reference torque is equal to rf sine theta where r is the moment arm multiplied with the force and sine theta is angle between the moment arm and the force we can uh, put in another information which is based from the original diagram given here the angle is 60 degrees meaning that angle between the rod and TF will be 30 degrees because we can assume it is creating a right angle triangle. With that, we are now going to proceed into using the second equation here which is total torque is equal to zero but before that we have to actually determine our axis of rotation or the hinge and then in this case this is going to be our axis of rotation then the torque that we're going to put inside of our formula here will be torque produced by TC as well as torque produced by TF. We can imagine that the torque produced by TC because TC is pulling the rod upward, it will rotate the object in this direction. So this will be the torque produced by TC and then this torque will be positive because it is counterclockwise and then the torque caused by TF is going to be pulling the rod downward so this one is going to be a negative torque TF the two torque here which is torque TC as well as torque TF is equal to zero and then we're going to put in the signs for TC, it will be positive because it is going to create a counterclockwise torque and a minus wave torque produced by the weight of the fish. Because it is at the very end 
of our rod the r here is going to be the full length of the rod and since it is not provided it is just going to be this unknown r and then multiply with the force which is tc and then the angle will be sine right so since this is 30 degrees the corner here will have 60 degrees of angle the angle that tc make with the rod will be a total of 80 degrees and then minus with again r the moment arm is equal to the total length of the rod and then multiply with the force which is tf and then multiply with sine 30 degrees it is equal to zero so we can put in the value of tf so r multiply with tc sine 80 degrees and then equal to r bring this to the other side will be positive r multiply with 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 and multiply with sine 30 degrees we can eliminate the r because it appears on both sides of the expression so tc will be equal to 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 sine 30 degrees over sine 80 degrees so tc is going to be equal to 6346.42 newton so this is the tension in the cable between the rod and the wall Calculate the horizontal and vertical forces exerted on the base of the rod. In this case, we need to calculate an X as well as an Y. Thankfully, we have obtained this expression. This two expression is actually based from the first rule for any object to be in equilibrium which is all of the forces when we add them together must equal to zero to find the horizontal forces exerted on the base of the rod we're going to be using an x so an x is equal to tc which is equal to 6346.42 the value that we have obtained by answering question number 2 multiply with cos 20 degrees. The answer will be 5963.7 Newton. Moving on now to the last question which is finding the vertical forces exited on the base of the rod which is ny so ny is equal to 12.5 times 10 to the power of 3 minus with tc again substitute the value that we have obtained 6346.42 multiply with sine 20 degrees the answer is going to be equal to 10.33 times 10 to the power of 3 Newton. So these are the two final answers for question number 3.